Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to measure for and plan for wire-wrapped prong settings. You can set many different stone shapes and sizes within a prong setting. So like all wire wrapping techniques, there are things to consider when designing a prong setting. And like all wire wrapping techniques, there are different ways to do this prong setting. So I'm going to bust through um, one of the most common ways that we can measure for and plan for our wire wrap prongs. So I'm going to start with a basic oval cabochon. It's about one inch by three quarter inch wide. And it's about, I'd say, five millimeter in thickness. The tools that you need to have on hand to make prong settings are a flush cutter for your wire. And then I like to introduce flat nose pliers to my students. Um, a lot of people think that chain link pliers are flat nose, but they're not. Chain link pliers have a point at their tooth. They start wide and go very narrow to a point, whereas flathead pliers are literally blunt at their ends. These two pliers are both flathead pliers, and this plier is a chain link plier. To make prongs, it's really nice to get a set of flathead pliers in different diameters so that you can use the end of the plier to help you size the prongs. If you don't have a collection of flathead pliers, then what you can do with your chain link pliers is basically measure off a certain distance, a certain diameter that you like, and use a Sharpie marker to draw a line across your plier on both the top and the bottom so that you can align your wire to that mark in order to make equal prongs, uh, equal height in your prongs each time. The other tool I want to mention is the grid paper itself. This particular grid paper is one inch by every four squares and it will really help uh, to design even placement of the prongs on a symmetrical cabochon. So the first thing I do is I align my cabochon to what I call a logical plane on the grid paper, meaning I don't just put it anywhere on the grid paper. I align it so that its perimeter is logically enclosed within either a square or a rectangle, um, a perimeter that fits the stone, this rectangle box, for example. After that, um, I trace the shape of the stone within that box. Setting the grid paper up like this and tracing the stone helps me to visualize where I might want these prongs on this cabochon. So in the case of this oval cabochon, I think I would want a prong about here and here at the base of it. And I might also want a prong here and here. For the sake of this lesson, I'm going to name these prongs. I'm going to call this prong one, two, three, and four. For a fully banded cabochon setting, meaning I've got bands, wrapped bands that go all the way around the cab rather than just bands at the prongs, for a setting like this, it's really easy to capture symmetry if you focus on prongs three and four first, the two lower prongs. Making sure that those two end up where you want them will ensure that the upper two end up where you want them also. And you can do that by simply counting wraps. 
So if I set these two bottom prongs first, and there's 20 wraps between prong four and prong two, there's gonna be 20 wraps between prongs three and one, moving up the stone. So now that I have an idea of where I want to place my prongs, how do I translate this little picture of a map into a linear map that I can follow with my wire? I'm going to use a highlighter pen and a couple of different colors to show you how I do this. So I want to translate the little picture of my cabochon and where I want my prongs into a linear map that I can follow. So the first thing I do is I split the cabochon in half. I show that with this pink line right here. And it doesn't have to be exact, um, but I, I draw the line, you know, all the way down here to a space where I can create a linear map. But I don't just draw a line anywhere. I follow the center um, of this cab down, meaning this block with the little dot in it, I draw down here to my linear map, and that will be the center of that, um, that map point. From there, I can count squares, basically, to either side of the cab. So this is a half a square, then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight full squares, and another half a square before I'm back at the top of my cabochon. So beginning to the right, I have a half a square that I've split with this dotted, uh, dotted um, center. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight full squares, and another half a square, which brings me back to the top of the cabochon. From here, it's really easy for me to translate where these prongs live. Focusing on the two bottom prongs, prong three and four, I'm going to draw a line from where this prong touches the cabochon right here down to my map. And again, it doesn't have to be exact because ultimately I'm going to check it when I physically make this piece. I'm going to count these wraps, but this will at least give me an idea of where I'm going on the map. I'm going to do the same on this side and I'm going to draw a little line from where the cabochon, uh, from where my prong mark actually touches the cabochon down to my linear map. This tells me the center point of my wire and where my first bottom prongs should live. From here, I can proceed to count squares half a square, one, two, three, four, half a square, one, two, three, four, and then I can make my mark for my second, I mean, for my prong number two. So I'm just going to make these a little bolder so that we see them. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. I could have also used tape to help me take this measure and make this plan. I could have also used uh, rope. There are several tutorials out there um, where people like to use different things um, to get their measure, and I'm showing you how to do it on grid paper just because I feel like um, grid paper works for a lot of different shapes and sizes, and because each of these squares is a quarter of an inch, it helps me um, just know how far certain distances are. 
I have a second video that shows how to construct these prongs, and so I hope that you'll watch that next. I hope that this little video was helpful to you, and if it was, please push the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. It helps to support me and my efforts to continue to make these free videos for us. Um, there will be more videos on prongs coming up, but I hope that this helps you at least understand a little bit about how I take measure. Thanks for being here and we'll see you again soon.